All right. Hello and good morning or good afternoon or maybe even good evening, depending on where you where you are. I am Monica Ahens Madden with the community team. And I am not joined by my uh, my counterpart, Britt Yazel, because it is currently four in the morning in California. So good morning, Britt. We hope you're having a very good night's sleep and you get to watch this when you wake up. Um, but this morning, uh, the reason we are doing this early is so we can get some of our fantastic open source mono team to talk with us. And I am joined by Mark Bayerl. And I am joined by Wit Ajiha Hamid uh, from our open source mono team. And Mark, you are a you are one of our engineers on the product. Uh -oh. That is correct. Oh, oh. And we lost. I, I told you you should have introduced Gia first. <laughs> I <sure>. guess <laughs> it's Gia's okay. Gia's it's early. it's 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 morning. The computers are all still figuring that it's out. All right. So why don't you both tell us about? Um, so why don't you both tell us about your kind of roles in the project? What is it that you do? Go ahead, Gia. For, yeah, first of all, I'm back, right? Yes, mm -hmm. you are back. Okay. We can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. So hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening. So, <clears throat> okay, I'll um, start with the, a little bit of introduction of myself in Canonical and then uh, in open source menu community, okay? So um right now i am the product manager in canonical leading the nfp manual activities like specifically for telcos um a little bit of background like previously i have worked in nfp domain specifically on the infrastructure layer and the automation uh, i also have some experience in developing uh, those network functions but overall uh, like my experience has been around nfp from the last few years so with the OSM community, I was working on and off uh, like since 2017, I guess. And uh, right now in the community, I'm holding the position of uh, Marcom chair and uh, leading mm -hmm. the Marcom activities for the open source community, open source manual community. Excellent. And what is Marcom for people who might not be as familiar with that? Yeah, so it's uh, just a task force um, mm -hmm. led by open source menu community. So it's just basically um, is there to bring visibility that what's going on in open source menu. So we are awesome. just there to, yeah, we are just there to promote everything that we are doing, for example, in the, in, in the form of webinars, in the form of other content creations like blog posts. And uh, then we have different events that we can talk about also, but um, we have, um, yeah, a lot of events going on. And then we also participate in the industry events like KubeCon, uh, MWC and things like that. So we can have a good visibility for open source menu and what we are doing there. And we really love to share that activities with others. So that's what we are doing right now. Excellent. And Mark, why don't you tell us about your role? Okay, so I started off many years ago as a 3GPP programmer. So I actually mm -hmm. worked on uh, the home subscriber service uh, for uh, for a, um, you know, deployment in telco environments. Somehow managed to end up getting uh, moving jobs and ended up working uh, with this wonderful little community called OPNFV. And that was my introduction to open source. And uh, the whole concept of sort of, you know, meritocracy within mm -hmm. open source. Um, so I uh, started to, you know, realize that um, it, it, it's about being genuine. It's about being, you know, uh, having open conversations, um, acceptance and being who you are. Um, so, you know, as, as, as the years went by in open source, I uh, became involved in open source Mano. Mm -hmm. And started out um, due to some of my background in DevOps, basically started out, you know, helping out on the DevOps side and eventually became what we call 
the MDL, or Module Development Lead, which is analogous to um, the uh, PTL position in OpenStack, basically. So I took okay. on the role. I took on the role of lead in the DevOps community. And um, over the years, basically, well, it's it, it's hard to believe, but it's only been about two, three years that I've been involved with OSM. Uh, but just recently, um, our a TSC position became available um, in uh, OSM, uh, and I applied for that, and I'm now on the TSC. So it's, you know... Uh, 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 an example of, you know, sort of open source communities working well in terms of, um, you know, when, 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 once you establish sort of that level of trust and, mm -hmm. and, um, and kind of show your competency. You got it. You got it. Um, so, yeah. So I'm uh, now currently on the TSC. Now, what is the TSC? Again, for those who might not uh, know. Absolutely. So that's the Technical Steering Committee. Okay. And they're responsible for technical direction of the project. So if somebody comes along with an idea for, you know, uh, either a side project, an enhancement, a new feature and whatnot, we're the ones that basically would look at that and go, okay, um, you know, this aligns with the vision of OSM or you're taking it a little too far mm. and watering down. So yeah. while we won't say, no, don't do that, we may say you, you can do that, but layered on OSM, not part of the core part of it. So yeah. Um, other things like some technology decisions. Um, sometimes folks come along with a, you know, we've got this really great idea, but it uses this non-Apache or non-compatible um, license. Mm -hmm. And we have to kind of, you know, walk that line of, okay, well, we've reviewed the licenses and unfortunately it's not compatible. So again, either layered outside or you got to use a different technology yeah so it's that type of thing yeah so in short we cannot survive without tsc in awesome <laughs> <laughs> no but it's really neat how both of you are involved in the leadership roles on kind of these two different aspects there which is really neat and just showing how involvement in open source takes so many different forms I absolutely does um you know one, one of the things that uh i've been uh, thinking about is our documentation there there's there's a lot of um you know a lot a lot of sort of momentum behind okay here we have the code base and here's a new feature and i'm writing code and i feel good because you know i'm moving something forward not everybody can code just like mm -hmm. not everybody can write elegant documentation and mm -hmm. we definitely need the full breadth of experience in in you know um natural aptitude uh, not, not just aptitude but passion passion that was the word that was like for. passion and kind of the willingness to learn yes yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, and I do know at the end we're going to have a spot for kind of how people can get involved and maybe we can kind of save some of this to, for <laughs> at part oh, so I'm and i'm adding little notes to our kind of um to kind of our flow here so i will not forget about documentation besides i think din yele our new head of uh actually new he's been there for six months but our head of uh our head of documentation at canonical would probably be very happy if we made sure to shut out out to documentation and how important it all is so what we've had um you've actually already in your interest talked about some of how you're involved in open source com communities uh are there any other um any other kind of community involvement that the both of you have that maybe we didn't get to in your intros um, okay, so overall, uh, like I would talk here about um, from a very overview of um, the company and also, first of all, I guess Canonical is a company for open source. So we have been mm -hmm. supporting open source from the very beginning and uh, the mission has always been around 
uh, I guess pro providing the trusted open source, and that's what we are doing with OSM also. So uh, for all the consumers and for all the customers we have, so. And now we are in very different sectors, like uh, OSM is really focused towards telcos, but we are in other sectors like industrial, agriculture, uh, manufacturing, and, and mm. also the healthcare. So um, I guess open source is solving uh, multiple challenges and we are really uh, ensuring that we provide the best solution in the way. I, um, I, I, I guess that's, that's our mission uh, from the beginning and it will be uh, from, for, for a very long time. So for other communities, like um, right now, I'm, I'm working in uh, open source menu. And before that, um, I, I was uh, working in multiple communities, like um, as Mark said, OPNFP. And uh, uh, before, before, like I, I hadn't any position in those communities. I was just following them and uh, um, see what, what's happening around. But uh, yeah. I'm, I'm the part of only open source menu right now. Yeah, and it's interesting how I think with a lot of the com communities, I know with myself and the and the Ubuntu community, I kind of spent some time kind of on the outside. It's kind of like, okay, this is, you know, it's like, this is interesting what they're doing. And then you kind of gradually just get pulled in and become part of, of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I used to... Spend Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I used to lurk always on the Ubuntu um, IRC channel, and <laughs> hopefully a question would come up that I could answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still hang out there all the time, but, uh, you know. Uh, we're, we're glad that people still use it. So, And actually, yeah. it is it is interesting on how our communication spans everything from IRC to everything that's come after and trying to bridge all of that too, which is important. I had to get myself an IRC client when I got hired. So I know, I know. Yeah, I was, yeah. Anyway, that's a whole different story, but I mean, what, yes. I and sorry, G, I accidentally cut you off there. Um, no, 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 no problem at all. Okay. <laughs> I was just talking about like we um, are also active in many other telcos communities, like uh, mm -hmm. specifically Open RAN and Magma communities. Like uh, yeah. we are with, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I have a feeling specifically telcos. Yeah, sorry. Oh no, I was saying that Magma is, I think, something that we could have a whole separate stream on. So yeah, yeah, we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're doing a lot of work there. Yeah. Yeah, so no, just we'll talk afterwards on more telco content. So cool. And um, any other um, any other open source communities or platforms or um, in very different domains, like but uh, not a position I I am holding right now. Okay. And Mark, how a about you what about your you've already told us how you kind of got involved with the ubuntu community by kind of yep. lurking in the shadows and pouncing on questions that you could answer yeah well i was uh, i uh, i mean i can't remember how long ago now but uh it was tux on ice which was basically an alternate form of hibernation for the kernel um, mm. And so it was a separate set of kernel patches. And um, I, I, I just love the fact that it would display a, um, you know, tux image with for the hibernation type of thing. So um, that's what got me into the IRC channels. Um, that's very was, cool. was following that. Uh, but yeah, uh, Linux Foundation and mm -hmm. the um, OPNFE uh, later what was called CNTT which was, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of put my own little elevator pitch around it, which was sort of the, the uh, telcos, the carriers, the operators, they all kind of got together and they said, it's one thing to be able to say, okay, I've got this virtual network function from vendor A, mm -hmm. but it runs on, you know, vendor number one's open stack. So I have to have a full vendor number one open stack to have vendor A run. Mm -hmm. 
Now I've got vendor B with another virtual function, mm. and it runs on vendors to OpenStack. So there goes all of the economy of scale that was being talked about with virtualization because now we've got all these 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 virtualization stacks. It's like streaming platforms. It's like, <laughs> oh, this is going to make things cheaper. And then it's like, wait a second, how many streaming platforms am I subscribed to? Anyway. <laughs> you got it. And so they 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 kind of said, well you know, it's time to take back a bit of this conversation and stop just accepting that a vendor can 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 say this. And let's start putting some sort of um, common infrastructure around what a, an open stack can be. And it's like, okay, these are the APIs that you're going to be able to support. And as long as you perform all of these with our set of tests over top of it, then you should be interchangeable with the next vendor and the next vendor. So it was all that standardization sort of thing. And it is a, a, a set of standards that are kind of growing out on their own. They're, they're, they're sort of, you know, saying, okay, well, we're just going to, you know, take this common um, platform and we're going to say, this is, you know, what the standard is. And the opposite is from the Etsy side, where they've already defined the standards when it comes to, you know, management orchestration and interfaces and everything. Everything is standards. And that is actually what OSM is doing. It's kind of taking these, these standards and codifying them and saying, okay, we'll implement things in this way. The two concepts are, you know, tangential one is uh you know for the telcos to be able to say can i make sure that my you know that that this this vm will run on the hardware or on the on the virtualization and the other is can i package the virtual network function mm. in such a way that i now have vendor neutrality when it comes to how do i orchestrate it so it's another layer higher, and the two um, the two often will meet. <laughs> so. Excellent. Well, I think you've given us an excellent oh, yeah. se se segue. I don't know if you did that on purpose. To let's get into an introduction to what exactly OSM is, and specifically what is Charmed OSM. Gina, right. you would you to like to uh -huh. continue? Sure, I'll, 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 I'll do the whole, what is OSM? <laughs> OSM, of course, OSM, of course is, is, is an acronym of acronyms. Or, or, uh, I yeah. really had to, when I was researching this. Yeah. yeah. So the OSM is open source MANO. MANO, of course, being uh, an abbreviation or an acronym of management and orchestration. So it is um, basically. Oh, I thought it was management and network orchestration. It, it's I, a, it has an N in, in the name, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think it, I think it's more than just network orchestration. Now, it may originally have started with mm -hmm. that, but I think I think they're sort of going, um, you know, general broad brush strokes now all orchestration not just network but you know i mean we, we we also have to deal with provisioning storage right so there there's there, there's more to it than just network now um but uh you've got me thinking now i'm gonna have to look that one up you got, you got <laughs> and who uh, knows it could have been both so Oh, absolutely. That's that's the wonderful thing about these, you know, um, uh, acronyms and whatnot is you, 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 you can change them over time. You mm -hmm. know, one, of, one of my favorites was, you know, like uh, lame, lame ain't an MP3 encoder or something like that. You know, it oh, basically no, not one of acronym. those yeah. like YAML. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but by the time we boil open source management and network orchestration down into OSM, we've got a nice little tidy word that we can just throw out and kind of go, okay, we got, we got an idea what we're talking about here now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
so um, yeah, um, you know, being being backed by Etsy, and this is the Etsy with an I, not a Y. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's not. You yeah, know, it doesn't have to do with crafts. No, my wife was excited when I first started talking. You know, Etsy. <laughs> you know what? I that happened with me when my husband was just ta was just talking about the Etsy directory and i'm like oh you're talking about etsy and they're like oh wait no and and then you just see where etsy gets their name from i yeah. am going to put the link to that in chat here there we go the <laughs> european telecommunication standard institute i believe etsy is a bit easier to say it is and and it's more fun to say mm -hmm. um so uh, they, they've been involved um, in defining uh, network function virtualization for a very long time. Um, a lot of uh, dense reading, a lot of uh, specifications and, you know, this should versus could versus shall versus should, you know, a lot of subtle terminology in, in the interface specifications. Um, so where was I headed with this again? What is OSM? So OSM mm -hmm. is software that basically codifies these interfaces and can consume a network descriptor. There we go. I can express how the software is supposed to look, the virtual function or network function. It needs these networks. It needs management coming in this way. It needs a data plane that is accelerated with SRIOV or DPDK. It needs storage that's ephemeral and a persistent volume. It needs whatever happens to be out there. You know, so many CPUs, a GPU, whatever it may be. And so there will be a standard way of being able to write this that anything that conforms to the Etsy specification will be able to run it. Mm -hmm. And um, I need to take a little sip of water, so I'm going to ask Gia to Fine. now go. Okay, what do we mean when we say charmed? Oh, mm. <laughs> okay, perfect. So uh, before going to charmed OSM, I would like to add uh, and conclude your uh, conversation. Actually, uh, you're talking about standardization, and also I would really like to conclude that here. Like. If you have a workload and you want to deploy it in multiple infrastructure, like multiple clouds, um, so that's where standardization comes in. So it's the main benefit. Like you, you, you have one workload and you can deploy that workload in multiple clouds. Like you have the same workload, you can deploy it in OpenStack, you can deploy it in Azure, and you can deploy it on AWS. So that's where OSM is using standardization actually. And uh, one uh, step back, if we talk about why we need OSM, I would really like to touch that point also before going into the definitions of uh, OSM and Charmed OSM. So I, I, I guess um, OSM is resolving very challenging issues right now, in, specifically in the telco domain. So uh, the development of network function is not a big issue anymore. Uh, like the migration trend has been widely adopted. Uh, the focus, I guess, should be now shifted towards how to manage and orchestrate these telco big network functions. So. As it's just one of the uh, challenges, like orchestrating the network functions in multiple locations, automation of uh, these network functions, and integrating these network functions with other open source technologies. So that are really needed to make the services and network functions uh, functional. So <laughs> I guess OSM is solving these challenges and turning out to be, I guess, the good choice for major telcos right now. Um, awesome. Yeah, so getting on to the charmed OSM. Uh, first of all, charmed OSM is same as OSM, as is the upstream OSM, uh, just to clarify here. Uh, it's just an effort actually led by Canonical, um, the same open source, but uh, carrier grade model driven OSM uh, with the enterprise support and uh, long term security updates uh, for our community partners and uh, telcos. So it's uh, just a different way of installation with more automation to uh, provide an mm -hmm. OSM with the same concept that we have converted all the modules of OSM into operators and uh, actually implemented 
the same concepts that OSM uses uh, to deploy the workloads. So um, like it's uh, just making OSM a model driven um, deployment. Um, other than that, it is more secured, uh, supported by Canonical. And uh, obviously we are providing support for OSM. It can be a long-term support uh, and a short-term support based on the release you are using, but uh, we are here to provide the support. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's just the different way of installation. It's just the more automated way of installation. You just need to, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, conf configure your installation and there you go. Like it's, it's just due to deploy OSM and that's it. <laughs> we do like things that make things nice yeah. and easy for pe people. So yeah, that's, that's what we are doing with John OSM. Yeah, so now you, um, this is good that we provided the link to Etsy. So can, uh, Mark, can you talk about how OSM helps to, helps people kind of align with those Etsy standards that have been in set? Yes. So, um, so Etsy has a, a, a big event and um, a large push behind interoperability. Um, Etsy has always been uh, a big uh, a proponent of that in trying to figure out ways of, okay, it's great to have a standard. It's, oh, sorry. Yeah, you, oh, something good came up. <laughs> I just uh, saw the link in the and. Okay. Just realized that we should put a link to Charm to OSM. Okay, okay. Yeah. All good, all good. <laughs> Got um, that. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. It's early. So, yeah, so Etsy hosts these, these events that they call the plug test. And um, that is uh, an opportunity for all different... Um, you know, vendors and and telcos and and you know consumers of things to get together and kind of do okay, how how are we going to interop with each other? Um, so they uh, Etsy actually provides an uh, automation platform that uh, will you know use all of these different APIs and and test the level of compliance with that, or or conformance, not necessarily compliance, but. Um, so, uh, you know, Et Et Etsy's always had these um, specifications. They uh, have these these tests that go around it, and then people get together and kind of go, okay, well, let's play with this and see how it works. So, um, OSM uh, also, uh, sorry. Way to show off the shirt. Way to show off the shirt. There we go. OSM happens to, uh, you know, it, align with a number of these uh, specifications. But of course, very, very particular, we focused on, you know, uh, so uh, uh, four, five, six, and seven, which, you know, um, sa sounds, sounds, you know, really important or whatever, but, um, you know, some, some of them are just around, well, what layout do the files for your network function take? How is it going to be packaged and delivered to the orchestration solution? So, you know, there, there's some things that you think, well, I mean, this is really trivial and mundane, mm -hmm. but it does, uh, you know, it, it, it makes a difference when it comes to ease of, of use and things like that. You know, when, when, once everybody can agree on a common format, um, you can do things like rent a car and it can be any different type of car, but you know where the steering wheel is. You know where the gas pedal is. And unless it's one of those new cars that have got the little dial for the gear shift, you kind of know oh, how to yeah. change gears. <laughs> I experienced my first one of those not too long ago, and I thought, oh, great. I'm going to go to you know turn up the volume and slam in the <laughs> Yeah, the, the, this is this is you know that that's kind of a case of innovation. That kind of anyway, don't get yeah. me started. <laughs> <laughs> so so while 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 standards can be dry, they do also help us to be able to you know uh, stand on shoulders of giants, if you will, and just be able mm -hmm. to have this common understanding, and and move move you know. Uh, have a higher level of conversation without yeah. having to always discuss the details. Yeah. And actually I think that's a really good 
example of the steering wheel <laughs> or the wheel drive to show why standards are useful. Like yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's that common frame of reference to work with. Yeah. Um, cool. So, uh, anything else about standards before we move into maybe talking about how the OSM community works? It seems like there is a very large community around this. Uh, well, that is true. We've there, there's there's currently, I believe, over a hundred and fifty companies that are um, members of. Um, O OSM within mm -hmm. uh, Etsy. So of course, obviously, there's a lot of company, a lot more companies than 150 that you know have their affiliations with Etsy and you know memberships and things like that. But it is specifically to the OSM community, we've got over 150 members. So um, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's there's a lot of different uh, contributors in in you know different places. Um, one thing, uh, you know, I'm going to little side tangent here and that is That's, we are totally fine with side <laughs> tangents here i would love um to start getting uh a little bit more student involvement and um mm -hmm. mentorship programs going um yeah. that's mark's dream <laughs> yeah yes, yes it is yeah. Unfortunately, I I have all of these really good intentions, and um, I, I get busy with uh, with things like making sure that our long term support is going to be long term supportable. Um, you know, things yeah. like that. <laughs> practical stuff that you know. You got it. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, um, under, when when I used to be part of OPNFV and and involved in the Linux Foundation, that was mm -hmm. something that I was really um, you know uh, passionate about, and and yeah. um, I never wanted to be a computer programmer. I wanted to be a high school teacher. Oh, does it show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I just fell into programming, but I gotta you know find these little side outlets where I can. Um, so, um, yeah, so overall OSM has, you know, different places for contribution. Uh, one of the things that, you know, we've been looking at was um, security scans and things mm. like that, you know? Okay, so um, Etsy has uh, been using GitLab as, a, a tool and um while we have access to a gitlab instance in osm we haven't really been um taking advantage of all that much and so we actually just have uh right now we have an intern student who uh is working for etsy and um we've been doing some conformance testing as well as looking at what things from gitlab dynamic security, uh, dynamic mm. application security testing. How can we attack certain things in OSM and make sure that it's, you know, secure? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, these, these are the sort of side little things that we've got going on that can make, you know, make, make for really good research for students. Um, so, uh, sorry, I thought somebody was, I thought Gia, you were about to jump in with mm. there. Um, so from this, you know, sort of loose collection of, of different people working on different things, I had mentioned the TSC before where we kind of, you know, like herd the cats in one direction type of thing. Make sure that that is yeah. such a necessary thing in anything <laughs> open source. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, the TSC itself is just yet another cat in a larger um, herd, because uh, um, around that we do have governance in OSM. So there is um, the End User Advisory Group, or EUAG, which basically uh, consists of, uh, you know, like telco operator representatives and, and people who have a vested interest in how OSM will be used, the end mm -hmm. users. And yeah. they're, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're the big vision thinkers, right? They're the ones who are looking on the five-year horizon and kind of going, okay, um, I know that for my, my company as a telco operator, we're going to need to have something with Kubernetes that's going to allow us to do 
whatever. And so they've got the long-term strategic vision and that sort of thing. And that boils down through to, you know, in conjunction with the TSE to setting direction for each release. So we kind of, you know, mm-hmm. at the beginning of a release, um, to try and try and set out major goals, you know, okay, okay. we're, 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 we're going to need, you know, um, workload migration, or we're going to need zero downtime or whatever it happens to be. Um, self healing, or perhaps just even healing in and of itself, which is another excellent research project for a university. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so the end user advisory group is the big, um, you know, f- far reaching, and then we also have a leadership group, which is kind of you know not necessarily um, thinking the the, the far reaching thoughts, but looking more to the practicalities of okay, we're going to need you know. End user advisory group, you're dreaming the big dreams. This is great. Yeah. TSC, you're saying you got to go with the technologies that we have. And we need the mm. leadership group to also kind of hold it all together and go, you know, talk, guys, talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and just to make it align with Charmed OSM, we also like narrow it down to our roadmap and at the end we have the very production ready thing <laughs> okay now this is what something we can use in production you know <laughs> oh and that's got to be tricky because not, so not exactly. only do you have the osm roadmap but then the canonical like that exactly. roadmap too and make it exactly. all work. I, I, I was trying to uh, jump in um like like mark was describing that uh it, it's 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 exactly from you know dreams to the reality so uh end user advisory group is always comes with different dreams then uh, it, it it has gone through with tsc okay this is what we can do and this is what we cannot and then we have our internal roadmap where we describe okay this is what reality is and this is what we can actually do so we, we have to keep align our roadmap so the point is we have to really keep align our roadmap with the uh, open source community roadmap uh, to mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, keep keep all the features in in our current release. That's where we are very similar to open source Mano upstream, and uh, we release after a few um, months or weeks. Mark, yeah, after, after the uh, release. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. This seems good because we have something about um, to talk about the release cadence of O. Oh, SM. So kind of how um, how how often does a new version come out? Are there significant changes? Mm-hmm. It seems like that this is a good point to kind of kind of jump to that there. So what is the life cycle of OSM? How does that work? So uh, like, sorry, sorry, Mike. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was okay. just saying every six months so twice a year so um when osm released version 10 that marked five years of osm so um yeah so uh the the idea is approximately may approximately november um we should be issuing a release um the reality is is that we we want to make sure it's a quality release Mm -hmm. so um oftentimes we'll find uh that um we will delay the actual release um because some you know you know maybe something came up so rather than um rather than sacrificing a feature for the date Right now, we're still in sacrifice the date for the feature kind of mode. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're, you know, we, we, with the announcement of uh, LTS concepts, and what the, what the idea will be is that every even number release will be supported for two years by the community itself. So um, this concept know, sounds familiar. It does. It does. <laughs> I, I did refer to uh, earlier to standing on the shoulders of giants to see further. And um, this was one of those cases where I kind of was looking at things and go, okay, um, within the community, like, let's just look at a pattern that already worked and just go with it. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
And even the term, you know, LTS versus whatever it is, you know, um, you know, Went, went to Wikipedia and took a look and they say, okay, LTS versus STS. Okay, let's just use those terms, even though short-term support sounds kind of negative. I just, you know, let's just yeah. accept that as a concept so that we can mm -hmm. have a conversation and move on. So, um, so yeah, uh, odd numbered releases are the ones where we're going to be focusing on the features more mm -hmm. so than the release date. And even numbered releases are the ones where we're focusing on the release date and um, you know production readiness over the features. So, exactly. Yeah. So that so way we're trying the, to, uh, go ahead, Virginia. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I was just trying to mention like this is one of the biggest milestone we have achieved so far, like uh, defining the LTS version of open source metal <laughs> from the last five years. <laughs> so it was um, Okay, and it initiated by Canonical, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so mm. we discussed these features uh, and we wanted the open source menu LTS support because like obviously every customer uh, we, that, that is using OSM, it's the, it's the same question every time. Like what is the LTS version and for how many years we are supporting OSM? Yes. So that, that was the very frequent question. So this is the uh, one thing we have achieved in the previous uh, months to define the MPS version of open source mail. Yeah. You know, it's it's those little things um, uh, that uh, that that creep up on you that you don't realize. You know, we were I I, I looked at you know what we were doing and we're you know building our our um, Docker images and you know we say we use. Ubuntu 18 as a base and whatnot. And from that, of course, OSM is a lot of Python code. So we have a Python interpreter in there and whatnot. And I'm looking at it going, oh, we're using Python 6 and that's already end of life. So how can I call this LTS? I went, Oops. Mm. <laughs> There's so many little details that go into, you know, saying, okay, we're going to make this LTS. And it's the type of, um, it, it, it all open source communities go go through this. Mm -hmm. It's the type of details of maintenance. You know, it's like, oh well, just because you you know up uplifted from Python two to Python three doesn't mean that you can stop with your Python, because Python three ten is introducing like a that they're they're deprecating some stuff that we depend on. So. Yeah. So there's, yeah. there's little, little details that go in and around that, and you know. Um, so making an LPS has been a very, um, good learning experience for me. Yeah. Now it seems like along with the releases that there are events in the community that happen around those. Can you kind of talk more about those? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we have two uh, major events um, in uh, du during every release. Uh, so we have uh, plenaries uh, that is actually like w what we have done in the release and what we have done, uh, what we need to do in the, in the, in the next one. Uh, so um, these things and the hack quest, there uh, is always a hack quest during the plenaries and an ecosystem day um, that is usually occurred uh, during the plenaries or the mid-release. So there are like uh, plenaries and the mid-release meetings. So it's like four in a year, right, Mark? Yes. It's, it's four in a year. Yeah. So there are two releases and then there is a mid-release event for every release. So there are four events per year. And uh, we have four hackfests usually, and then we have four ecosystem. Like if for every event we organize, we uh, we usually do the, eco the ecosystem day and the hackfest. Mm -hmm. So in the hackfest, usually what we do is uh, um, for, for the past few hackfests, we are providing uh, so we, we are coming up with some challenges to the participants. Um, <laughs> sometimes it it it, uh, it it was getting tougher for the participants, but still it was kind of cool challenges to the participants to come and test their abilities with OSM, uh, especially with the latest release of OSM. So 
It was, it was fun. But, um, this time we have organized Hackfest in a very different way. Like we, um, for the first three days, we were giving tutorials from the very basics, like what it is OSM actually and the OSM architecture and things like that. And on the last two days, we provided them with the challenge. Okay, now uh, you are on your own and deploy your network services with OSM. Oh, wow. So, it's like an OSM boot camp. Almost. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Like we, we do that like uh, four times or three times a year. So it, it's really a good participation. And we really sometimes got amazed by the participants' uh, demos. Like they have actually done that, you know. <laughs> so um, nice. yeah, they're coming up with many, uh, very uh, good expertise. Uh, so the audience for Hickfist is usually like. Um, it can be anyone. We welcome uh, all of them. Like it can be any network operators, service providers, uh, VNF vendors, uh, system integrators, um, academia and university, as Mark always mm -hmm. wants. <laughs> uh, then uh, experimental developers, like if, if they want to, you know, uh, share and test anything with, with the community. So it's it's always been an ex interesting experience with the Hickfist. Uh, Mark, before going to ecosystem day, do you want to add something to Hickfist? I, I I'm, I'm figuring out like you want to say something. Yeah, well, <laughs> so 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 the Hackfests. Um, my my okay. sorry. No, it's no, my, I, I think we have lost the video. No, you no, I got it. Yeah. No, we're all good. good? Oh, okay. So yeah, the Hackfests. Um, Okay, so going back pre-COVID, we would have our plenary and then mid-release meetings face-to-face. -face. Um, would either be at a company-sponsored location, like uh, at one time it was at uh, VMware, another time it was at Intel headquarters, or it was at a university, the University mm. of Petras in Greece. Um, was the university, I can't remember the name of the university, in um, uh, outside of Florence, uh, Italy, basically, mm. um, that was that. And so um, while, you know, while the leadership group was off, you know, kind of talking the, you know, um, working procedures and big direction and all that sort of stuff, we would also have members doing the hack fest in a side room with, you know, sometimes 70 students um, in the room type of thing. And so, uh, you know, once COVID hit and we started doing all of these things virtually, yeah. we, we needed to try and find a way to redefine the hack fests themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because, uh, the way it worked when we were all in a room is there's the one person at the front who's sort of, you know, going, okay, here's the concept, here's the lesson, you know, this is, this is where yeah. this is the challenge that you're following. And the rest of us would, you know, kind of be sitting at the sides watching for the look on <laughs> faces and going, okay, there's somebody, we're just going to go over and we're just going to sit beside them and just kind of, you know, mm. I get what was going yeah. on. You can't yeah. do that virtually. You can't do that. <laughs> you don't see faces. So it's been yeah. a bit of a challenge um, to reinvent the hack fest. And, and this sort of, you know, design challenge it was, was, was something that we, we, we definitely, um, you know, found to be useful. Um, so, um, you know, e even even what we called the ecosystem day, that mm -hmm. would would have been a, a presentation that you know we have everybody already in the room, and you know, we, or or you know, a, a, the, a, a theater or whatever it happens to be, and we would then have people come up and sort of do presentations of how are they using OSM in the real world. Mm -hmm. um and that uh for for the most part has been successful um and the hack fests we found we had to change it to be a little bit more uh pedagogical whatever that word is basically a little bit teaching drier. based teaching Sorry. based teaching based yeah where <laughs> where all we can do is just sort of say okay here are some concepts but we don't have quite the same interaction so yeah. um so uh that that's why uh g has now been saying well it used to be four times a year because we would meet you know um pre you know at the start of a release mid-release start mm -hmm. of the release mid-release and it was like clock that also sounds familiar too yes yeah. 
And so now we've started to realize that, well, this doubling up that we used to do where we had, you know, these these you know leadership sessions and then the teaching sessions. Well, you got people that are trying to run back and forth between the two. And sometimes conversation had to stop because somebody is in the middle of doing a, you know, in the hack fest. So we started to, you know, loosen that up a little bit. And we're kind of going, oh, we could do a hack fest at any time now. And dedicate mm-hmm. ourselves to that. Yeah. So, um, so that's been a little bit, you know, uh, it, while it came with its own challenge, it's, it's also been a little bit liberating as well. And so, um, you know, that's uh, we actually have um, another person uh, by the name of Matcha who um, is uh, leading the uh, VNF onboarding task force. And that, that task force is also primarily responsible for the hack fests. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, between um, Gia with planning out the um, marketing events and messaging and whatnot, um, the, the, the hack fest as well uh, has started to take on a much more um, focused, like, okay, we have Camellio, which is a telco VNF, that provides voice over IP services for a cellular network. Mm -hmm. Here's your Camellio. Go ahead, onboard it with OSM. And that's the, you know, we provide all the background, the teaching and everything like that. But your end goal is you're actually going to be bringing up a live voice over IP server that you can communicate with. That's exceedingly cool. Yeah, that's a, 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 well, we're hoping to do oh, a couple of years ago, we did one like this with Magma. Mm. Um, so we're really going to have to schedule something for Magma. Just say it. <laughs> I <laughs> like I, to hear Monica. <laughs> mm-hmm. do, you, do you know if we're bringing, if, if we're planning on bringing, uh, doing Magma again? I think we are. Um, yeah, hopefully in MWC. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. We're also yes. going in MWC Barcelona and uh, going to present ourselves there also. Oh, yeah. Nice. Now, I did hear that there, so along with the Hackfest, you had these um, events called Operator Days. Now, what are those? Oh, uh, Operator Day is more of a... Oh, sorry, not Q-Con. Operator Day. I'm thinking of KubeCon. Ecosystem, Ecosystem Day. Day. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was unable to... <laughs> Thank you for translating. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> actually, I was about to describe Operator Day too. Um, <clears throat> no problem. So for the Ecosystem Day, um, actually, this is the one-day event. Uh, that is or, uh, actually organized by Marcom. So the purpose of this ecosystem day is uh, to invite all the community members and uh, the external members to come and present their success stories with OSM, like what they have done with OSM, how OSM is benefiting them, uh, whether they are happy or not with OSM. So it's really the um, proof of concepts and the use cases kind of things like business use cases where the uh, different companies different telco companies come and present what they are doing with osm in uh, their companies and in their projects so um, that's really a very uh, reality touch to the uh, osm like uh, how it can be um, like officially used in different scenarios, in different telco scenarios, in different production grade environments. So uh, it's it's really really useful. So we dedicate almost half a day to mm-hmm. those uh, presentations, and uh, we invite uh, different members to come and present. Uh, so usually we cover a wide range of aspects from like research activities uh, in academia to the production deployment and commercial initiatives. So many of them are focused on many trending technologies like uh, 5G, um, edge computing, and they just come and present what they are doing with OSM uh, in, in all the trending. So last time, Ecosystem Day, like they, they have very, uh, we always present an ecosystem, by the way, like uh, mm-hmm. we are organizing ecosystem day. That's another story, but we uh, always go with some uh, different use case with uh, OSM, like what we are doing with OSM in Canonical. So uh, we always participate there. And different companies like Tata, Intercom Telecom, they, they came and presented OSM last time. So 
it, it's it's a fun activity and we discuss like what's and we actually like uh, got some ideas like what we need to do you know as to improve that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and it seems like if people want to watch these ecosystem days that the youtube that there's an open source mano youtube yep. channel and i have got the link oh, oh you've got it <laughs> Yeah, we have all the videos here, and specifically, we have a uh, wiki pages for ecosystem days, like where mm -hmm. you can just go and oh, find nice. the videos. Uh, yeah, for the last ecosystem day, this is the link. Perfect. Thank you. You can see all the videos, like what we have done there. Nice. So, if there are certain technologies that people are interested in, then they can go to the wiki yep. and kind of see. Nice. So, and it seems like for organizing the ecosystem day that Anonical has taken kind of a big role. And so what do you think that, um, how is Canonical helping kind of OSM kind of solve some of these challenges in the telco world and also how it's helping OSM bring these different open source technologies t t together. Hmm. So I, I guess uh, we have discussed the challenges it is solving in the very beginning, like, for example, um, the management and orchestration of network functions of uh, telco network functions and how to integrate different network functions together in, in the telco and production grade environments. So um, that's one thing. And uh, I guess um, from like, I, I would really uh, don't want to distract any conversation, but I would really touch a little bit about uh, how we are doing in the mobile private networks. So from mm -hmm. Telco perspective, like there is now a great focus on the private mobile networks. Uh, like I'm, I'm trying mm -hmm. to answer that question, like how OS, open source technologies, you know, uh, OSM is helping uh, to bring them together. So um, it, it has been very encouraged to use open source technologies like open source core and open source RAN, um, just to, you know, reduce the overall op OPEX and COPEX. So um, like it, it's, it's it's just been encouraged like to use the open source softwares anywhere even in the telco environments now so osm is there actually at the top to deploy all these network functions including core and ran which use open source technologies at the end and osm um, can be at the top to check the uh, requirements of network functions and what other open source tools uh, it will need for integration actually so mm -hmm. this can be done by an integration tool. And I guess that is what OSM is uh, providing right now, uh, managing from the top and provides cross-model um, relations between multiple apps or services deployed by OSM. So, and again, this has mainly be achieved uh, by the standards we follow in OSM uh, to, you know, integrate and inter make it interoperable, uh, the different telco, uh, open source technologies together in, in a way in a in a very big telco networks and all so i guess that's what osm is doing there excellent mark did you have any points to add one of the things that i i yeah, was thrilled when i was offered a job at canonical because the the whole concept of ubuntu the whole concept of humanity to others um was something that I had personally embraced once I started working in open source, um, having come from, you know, a closed source telco background type of thing, where you very carefully guard your secrets. Mm -hmm. It started getting involved in this whole, oh, you design in the open, code in the open, talk in the open. And, you know, I talked about wanting to be a teacher and all that sort of stuff. This, this, this passion that I had for giving to others and working with others is something that's part of open source. And it is a wonderful, you know, place for me to be where I can see the alignment of, well, you know, there's business out there. People have mm -hmm. to make money. And at the same time, we can be good to each other. 
and 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 help each other. And mm-hmm. um, th- this is actually where I see, you know, um, f- for me, open source Mano is more than just a, you know, solving a business need. It is also solving a you know, communication need where we need to come together and we need to be able to work together in order to provide, you know, the, the, the most elegant and best solution that everyone is getting behind. And mm-hmm. so that is very much a, a part of the philosophy and what I, you know, what I love seeing inside of um, open source communities like this. And um, it's also really nice to be able to while I represent a, co- a company, I mm-hmm. also have that freedom to, you know, sort of say, okay, you don't see me as canonical. You see me as a person. Mm-hmm. And let's talk about what makes things best. And let's talk yeah. about what benefits everyone. Um, yeah. So that, that to me is very much, um, you know, where, what, where OSM is headed and, and what Canonical can help to bring to that. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'd like to like take, talk, Talking yeah. about, uh, yeah, yeah, you have talked about working together. I really appreciate this idea. And uh, this is where OSM markets come in, comes in. Like, this is all OSM has working together, like working together with system integrators, with VNF vendors, that is what OSM market contains. So like, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, <laughs> OSM is a part of a big puzzle. Like it's it's a, just a cake slice. No one no one uh, will uh, from, from the, you know, actually uh, big telco operators would buy OSM as a single product. So we need to work together to sell something, uh, to create a beautiful solution and present that to telcos and the bigger, bigger operators to, um, you know, to adjust that in their solutions and things like that. So yeah, working together is really important in OSM. Uh, system integrators, VNF vendors, they all need to come together, sit in the room and and uh, see see what we can do in, in providing the best solution out there. Yeah. And I guess this, this, this should be the approach we can follow to improve. And that's where the Etsy plug tests are really great because yeah. we're, we're all, you know, the, you've got all, you know, vendors and suppliers and, and potential customers um, sitting together, but nobody's doing a sales pitch. It's all oh, about, that's awesome. will this work? Yeah. And if it doesn't work, why, you know, not yeah. hey, your system is buggy, it's faulty. Um, the, the, the plug tests are never about, oh, you know, you failed, you know, this test or whatnot. It's always about, okay, where are the rooms for improvement? And, and yeah. things like that. so that's it's nice. really it's heartening. So I know that we are kind of, well, we're a little bit past our hour here, yeah. but I do have a link that I want to share for the next ecosystem day. But yes, for people, um, uh huh. Um, yes. Sorry, sorry. Oh, no. Keep going. Yeah, um, again, so the, this is really important. This is going to happen in uh, in March, uh, 9th of March. So if anyone wants to participate and if anyone wants to, uh, you know, uh, already working with the OSM and wants to present something, we really welcome them to participate. That's it. Exit. Excellent. So, and I know I did share the link that Mark provided on how to join the OSM and we have the YouTube channel. Are there any other resources or bits of advice that you would like to share for people who are curious in finding out more or getting involved? So from the, um, I, I think there's, you know, how to get involved. I, basically the you know, osm.etsy.org has a bunch of resources there mm-hmm. as well. Um, there's a Slack uh, channel. Um, Got that. Always a Slack. <laughs> Sorry? Always, Always a, Slack. a Slack. Yes, yes. Um, there are mailing lists as well, which um, tend to be, uh, it, it, it's not so much technical discussion anymore. And that, that seems to happen more in the um, uh, audio uh, meetings and mm-hmm. um, the Slack channel. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah, there's there's a number of uh, different things. There's Twitter and LinkedIn as well. Um, that that you know for 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 broadcast announcements about rah 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 OSM. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's uh, you know, and we are all approachable. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so so sometimes we get a little bit busy and and might not reply right away, but we're all approachable and you know, we're humans too. Exactly. <laughs> come, come yeah. Talk us. So. Yeah. Excellent. And Kia. Yeah, I've also uh, shared some links. First oh, of all, the, I uh, see it. Yeah, OSM it's C. Um, like it, it has all the information. It's uh. All the, it can cover all the sections that we have just discussed. And again, uh, there is a tutorial for if anyone wants to try Charm OSM, like I have described, it's really easy to, to deploy OSM. So if really anyone wants to try. And last thing, we have our uh, LinkedIn um, group uh, for open source menu. It's really active. So if anyone wants to join that, you are really welcome. We are there and uh, let me just share. Yeah, saying if you happen to have a link, that would be that would be great. We like links, and it, there we go. Perfect. Well, great. Well, I have a feeling that this will not be the last time we have the both of you on. So. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I think I, I yes, I think somebody's gotten the Ubuntu on air bug. Yes, so but I just wanted to thank the both of you so much, and it's really exciting to get to see kind of um, the you know the wider aspects of our community who are getting involved with these really interesting projects that have such an impact in that also have such an impact in the real world so that's very cool but i just wanted to thank you both so mark you can go get yourself another cup of coffee gia get yourself some more tea thank you for doing this yes. so much and i really hope that this you're speaking of in person that i get to see you both at an event at some point that would be really, really looking really forward nice. to that. Actually, yeah, actually, if you both will be at the engineering sprint in Frankfurt, I will be there. Yes. We'll come <laughs> find you. Excellent. Excellent. We'll, we'll, we'll look for we'll look for your well, even without the cat ears, I think I'll be easy to, to find. But thank you both so much. And thank you for those of you who are either watching this live or who are watching this afterwards. Thank you. We hope this provided a great introduction to OSM and Charmed OSM, and we hope this gets you curious to join. Anyway, thank you both, and we will see you both later, and we'll see everyone later. Bye. Thank you. Bye.